Concorde over there. And they took left 144 over there. Stream. It's good weather today. Still a bit, little bit sore about the stream yesterday, but the pack is lighter, so it should be better. Whew. Look at that. Hmm. All right, so there you have it. Concord and the Tukulev 144 together. but one was more successful than the other. The biggest, the biggest thing about the Concorde... Now, if, hi, Napsai, hello. The biggest thing... Concorde and the... Um, and the Tuklev 144, the sun is coming out, is... Um, let's switch around. Is that the uh, Konkorski basically had to afterburn all the time. So it was loud. The wing was optimized for supersonic flight only, so the landing speed was way higher. And you can see the canards on the plane ahead. Like the plane closest to us is the Concorde. The one further from us is the 
Tuchel F144. But it's, yeah, I'm in Germany, man. I've been here for a couple of days. Yesterday I visited Buran on stream. And today I'm visiting Sinsheim. And I'm looking at Concorde and Tuchel F144 together. I mean, it's pretty unique to have a collection like this. So it's only 40 kilometers away from the other. And my Airbnb was smack in the middle of the both of both the museums, so that was a no-brainer. <laughs> uh, I'll go in later, but first I think I'm gonna go into the uh, Tukolev 144. But it's an awesome sight having them both together like this. It's pretty cool. So this museum has a very large collection of cars, but I went here for uh, for this basically. <laughs> so they have some Formula One cars, classic Formula One cars. That's pretty cool. So the last flight of this particular Concorde was in 2011. I don't know about the Tuchel F144 that been out of commission a lot, lot sooner because the maintenance costs were uh, skyrocketing. And there's a really good, uh, there's a real good um, YouTube uh, uh, movie on uh, on the Con on the Tuchel F144. It's made by Mustard. Mustard he made a great video. It also explains why the uh, 144 didn't wasn't so successful. Basically, the Tupolev 144 had the afterburn all the time. I live four hours and 40 minutes. Yeah, that's closer than I am, man. You should visit here. But the Konkorski had to afterburn all the time to keep flying supersonic. The wing was also optimized for supersonic flight only, and the Concorde could uh, have better performance at lower speeds yeah I'm just gonna hang out here a little bit <laughs> finally some sun But it's it's just unique to have both planes at the same pl in this in the same spot. It's just incredibly. It's just incredible. Yeah. So the Russians operated seven, seven one uh, one four fours. I don't exactly know the numbers of Concorde, but yeah, the Concorde could supercruise. Basically, the Concorde didn't need afterburn to sustain supersonic flight thanks to computer controls of the engines and the variable inlet. Konkorski didn't have that, so they had to use a lot more fuel, so the range suffered, and it was a lot louder. But still, <laughs> both, both very beautiful planes. And after they took Concorde out of commission, I mean, it, I know it's it was a plane for the rich, but looks like we took a little step back there. <laughs> we don't have any supersonic planes anymore. But let's go uh, walk up and um, let's check both planes out. We can get in.
Yeah, and so I, I should visit both museums. You can get a little bit of, uh, um, how do you say it in English? You can get a better price if you visit both museums. So both Speyer and Sinsheim. So the wings are actually curved. Huh. That's interesting. I am going to the left. Okay. Ah, no, oh, it's gone. Okay. that axle the main landing gear there hmm. wow it's under the wing Uh, we <laughs> right there look at that that is pretty sweet guys look at that <sighs> oh that's a view look at that right. let's get in that's really cool wasn't cool enough. Look at what we have in the background, man. We have the Concorde here too. So both Tukolev 144 and the Concorde are both here. Let's get in. So. So yeah, big, big difference in designs. The Soviets didn't have the, the same engine technology at the time. So it wasn't able to supercruise without afterburners, which made the range suffer. And it was loud, look at that here. The engines are obviously t taken out, but look at that. It's pretty cool, man. Look at that. Well, this is not a Concorde. I mean, this is the 144. That's the Concorde, man. Look at that shot. Right. Let's get in there. So, main hatch. Steep climb here. It's a pretty steep climb because of the angle the plane is sitting. That's economy seats there, but back then they had more leg room. See that? <laughs> Apparently this is first class. Oh, no toilets. All right. Oh boy. 
Yeah. I can't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> No, it doesn't. That's <laughs> okay, Next day I was visiting Buran, so Oh, yeah. This is a flew a sailplane. Flew a sailplane. Right. 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 down. Right. 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 Apparently this was first class. We got a table in first class. But still, more leg room we have nowadays. <laughs> So to the left only flew one flight room. Alright. Switch around. It's the main entrance. Front entrance right there. Alright. It's really narrow, so I can make some. Yeah. 
Stop. Okay. There we go. All right. Это выход. Сразу на улице. Освещение. Вот это третий. Так, что у нас тут? А тут какая крыша. Вон там вот кабина пилота. Сейчас мы это все будем фотографировать. Это он печально стоит. Помахай ручкой, ты на ручку. Передай Мазе привет. All right, here we go, guys. Took, took a little, little while. Breaker boxes. Pretty simple fuses, actually. Old school. Look at that. Here we go. Typical green paint and all analog. Look at that. That is pretty cool. That's the cockpit of the Konkorski. Here we go. That's pretty awesome. All right. Look at that. Okay. Give some other people some room. I'll make photos later. <laughs> Straight. You have to be careful not to trip here. Oh wow. Well, that was Konkotsky. Make some photos later. Wings are really curved downwards. See that? That's pretty cool. And there we have Concord. Right there. Amazing. Hey, comic girl. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Well, here we have Concorde. And if I turn around, what do we have here? Concordski to level 144. Together. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> so, yeah, in real life today. Science technology. Look at that. But I'm live at Museum Technique Museum Sinsheim. If Speyer Technique Museum wasn't cool cool enough, so yesterday I visited Buran, and I maybe go to, go back there today. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not. I just want to see Buran again, actually. <laughs> 
really cool. Uh, okay. Um, let's let's go inside. Let's wait in line to go into a uh, court. Big difference between uh, Tulev 144, that's right here, and um, <laughs> the Concorde that is <laughs> right here is that the Tulev 144 have the afterburn all the time to remain supersonic. Um, where this place is? Pretty face. Oh, thanks. This is in uh, Sinsheim, Germany, and the unique thing about this museum is they have both the 144 and the Concorde together. So that's the amazing thing. So let's switch. Let's switch. Here we go. Sonic. The Concorde actually had uh, fuel controlled engines and in, uh, had inlets that could vary airspeed for the engines so they could hypercruise, supercruise basically. That's the, that's the name for it. So it, was, it had more range and less loud for the passengers. So that's why the Concorde stayed in service for uh, 27 years and uh, Konkordski uh, yeah, not so long. I don't know how long they flew the Konkoski, the Kong, the Tuklev 144 actually. But. Yeah, so yesterday I visited Buran. Life in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have the chance to live in Europe, close to Germany, I mean, it's worth the trip. So both Speyer and Sinsheim. Speyer has the Buran. And yeah, since I have both the two left one for one for one for one for four and the move. So I have to build this in Kerbal now, obviously. Yeah, you should. Always good to promote museums, right?
in the street in public that night. I'm not used to it. So I tend to uh, not pay my Cambria fee. Respect to privacy. More stairs. Let's see. So, yes, focus. Lost focus a little bit. Okay. Careful, right here. You can bump your head quite ugly in that. All right, and we're inside Concord. Completely different interior compared to the uh, rather Spartan Tupelo 144. Look at that. Still a pretty steep climb. First class, of course. Still more leg room than we have nowadays. All right. I have to wait for people.
Right. I'm roll for uh, watching the flight deck. Like with the level one four more. Alright, let's go. The last flight wasn't too fast in the letter. Not sure. We don't want to trip, that's a uh, long fall. Okay, so, so okay. Sorry, can't go right. No problem, man. <laughs> So the flight deck of a Concorde, almost there. <laughs> it's it's eerily similar to the uh, Tukulev 144 actually. Obviously, it's more. All right, there we go. So you can see the breaker boxes. It's it's very very similar. My goodness! All right, look at that. That's the Concorde flight deck right there. Wow! That is really cool. Wow. It was quite a climb, but worth it. Very, I mean, it, there's a big difference, of course, but it's very, very comparable to the Tukulev. Surprised. Wow. All right. Let's make other people watch here. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, very narrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That good. laughs> yeah. It's a dive under here. Let's see, there's a few of the wing. Not that much. View. of Concord. My goodness. That was really cool. Hope you guys like that. That was quite the climb. And 
and the Concorde on the inside as well, like including the flight deck, which was awesome. Let's get it to a nice filming spot. I think this is a nice, nice spot to be. Here we go. There. <laughs> Whew. That was really cool. That's, that's worth it, man. That is so worth it. So the entrance was about is about 16 euro 16 euros free parking at this spot at Speyer you have to pay a little bit for parking but I mean both museums are so worth it absolutely worth it so any questions uh, folks fire away <sighs> I mean, both the uh, Tukulev 144 and, I mean, typical of the Tukulev was the green cockpit paint. That's the... And of course, uh, it had the old-fashioned old fashioned fusion uh, of uh, fuse breakers. <laughs> yeah, it had a motorcycle steering wheel, didn't it? Thanks for sharing this. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, no problem. I'm stuck inside. Aww. Well, it's good to have channel a channel like this, right? Normally, I'm I'm inside playing Kerbal, but yeah, I definitely have to make a Concorde and a Tukulev 144 in Kerbal now. I don't know how I make the uh, canards though for the Tukulev to fold out like the real one. I have no idea yet, but. <laughs> No jail. <laughs> I'm stuck inside. <laughs> well, this is pretty cool, dude. This is so cool. Yeah, let's switch camera to the better camera. Let's get the high quality camera out. I'm still, I'm still filming with a potato, like an old Nokia 5. Oh, speaking of which, how the battery is doing? Uh, pretty good. Battery pack is holding up. That's good. All right. I missed the science thing. Well, <laughs> I mean, talking about the difference between the Concorde and the uh, Tukulev. Um, the Tukulev was uh, flying a little bit sooner as the Concorde did, but it uh, made use of different technology. I mean, the Russians had to make do. The Concorde, on the other hand, had like the, the Rolls-Royce computer uh, controlled engines on it and had the variable inlets. So they were able to, to super cruise. Did you stream, stream the museum? How do you mean? But um, yeah, instead of the Tukulev 144, I uh, had to rely on afterburning all the time. So that obviously made the, the range to suffer. And it was a really loud plane to travel in. You can, you can find a really cool uh, video about um, the difference between the Tukulev and the 144 um, on YouTube. Well, Mustard has a really good, cool video on it. But it's so cool to see him in real life and to share it with you guys. Um, I have to go inside. So that's uh, that's the next uh, big thing. 
I thought you also went, this is a museum. This is a technique museum. Anyways. And yesterday I went to uh, Speyer, which is, uh, they, they work together, both Sinsheim and, Spe uh, and Speyer Technique Museums work together. But I might return to, uh, to Speyer, Speyer Techni Technique Museum, because I, I, I freaking love the Buran that's, that's over there. The Buran is so cool. Mm -hmm. So they have steam locomotives, they have a really big car collection, uh, classic Formula One cars. We don't have museums like this in the, Netherlands, in the Netherlands. I mean, that's for sure. This museum is enormous. Like like the one in Speyer is enormous too. But I might return to Speyer uh, later today. Because I, yeah, I, I would really like to see Buran again. But this was the reason why I get got here. To see both the Concorde and... The two left one four one four four or Konkorski. <laughs> okay man. Bye Penny. Pennywise. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I will uh after after the stream I will uh pick up my camera and uh go around and make some photos for the home collection. <laughs> Do some research for KSP building, right? <laughs> yeah, they're 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 awesome, and the weather is just beautiful too. The sun is really coming through, so that's cool. Uh, it's they're they're legendary planes. It's so cool. No, not yet. So same goes for Buran. I have a Buran, but definitely you need to build that one too. So let's uh, let's move on in uh, other parts of the museum. So we'll return to uh, to these later. Gunkers 52. Look at that. And there we have a Canberra. Right there. So the yeah, so Great Britain actually did uh, a recon flight over uh, over so the Soviet Union with with a Canberra in the I think the early 50s or late 40s, late 40s I think, and the Russians couldn't intercept it. They did hit it though. I'm here watching, listening, just away from a keyboard a bit. No worries, no worries. Let's get in the Junkers. So, Junkers actually used, you can see the uh, profile, it's, it actually made it stronger. Like you uh, have a piece of paper and you fold it. So that actually added to the strength of the airframe and the wings. Pretty cool, eh? Let's get inside. It's really narrow. That's a Junker 52. There we go. Huh.
obviously three engines. Really cool. Those steering wheels. That is really cool. Okay. Huh. Okay. And that's simple Yushin, I think, right here. That is an awesome fuel. Look at that. Huh? That is so cool. So there are opening hours for the Tukulev. Okay, so I can get back in at four. Okay. All right. So I want to make some pictures myself. So I have to tuck away my streaming set, and I want to get back in Concordlets uh, in uh, Tukulev 144. I have ten minutes. I don't think I'm gonna make it. That is what it is. I didn't know what there were opening times for uh, for the 144, but it's yeah, it's really hard to climb in. <laughs> okay, um, let's get into the museum. Let's watch the rest of it. Yeah, ouch. Yeah. Double ouch. Where your seat where your seat belts, folks. Right. So EJ was talking about Formula One cars. Well, they have some here. Look at that. Look at that.
the main attraction the main attraction for me was the uh, Concorde and Triple F 144 but this is cool too man if you're into Formula 1 I mean this is quite a collection For a lot of Formula One cars from the nineties, mid nineties. again there yeah look at that now that's a rare bird guys, that is three hundred SL. Saber hanging from the F F86 hanging from the roof there. And huh. Okay. Oh yeah. Here we go. Lamborghini Muria. Yeah, that is really rare. This is the inside of the museum, so if you're into cars, I mean cars and planes and steam locomotives. I can't tell really much about the cars here, but 1997 McLaren Mercedes. So probably see th seen this car live. Was in Hockenheim late late 90s. All right. Massa Pantera. There we go. Most of the 80s and 90s supercars are uh, are here. Hmm. I think they those are the uh, Concorde engines. Look at that main landing gear. Look at the brakes on this one. So one of these um, one of these tires actually exploded on one Concorde flight flight during takeoff, and the threading, uh, you know, there's there's like metal metal and Kevlar inside, or metal inside, and that flew right through the fuel tank. And that grounded and that grounded the the Concorde for a long while because they had to strengthen the uh, the fuel tanks with Kevlar. Really cool. 
cool. Yep. Lots of cars. Lots of motorcycles. Just making a quick round through the museum here. There we go. All right. Okay, if you f let's throw something in here. There we go. There we go. Now this is the, look at that. That is something. Can't grab meat. Hello, man. Oh, <laughs> Sulu. So that's. That's some mechanical perfection right there. Look at that. That's amazing. So this train was able to, to pull a load of 500 tons at 160 kilometers an hour. Just amazing tech. There we go. Let's um, there we go. All right. Pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, how do you become a rocket jockey, uh, Psy? I have no idea. How do you become a rocket jockey, Psy? We go and welcome dude this is technique museum oh my goodness here we go after this is technique museum sensime oh yeah group b baby lancia stratos trains <laughs> yep look at that okay how do you become a rocket jockey, by the way? How, how are we going about that? How do we do that? 
All right. So vampire on the roof there. Could be a venom too. All right, let's let's get up. Let's get up there. Let me show you something, Psy. Let me show you something, Psy. That will blow your hair back. All right. So we have some Formula One cars right there. But let's let's get up. Let's get up the stairs. So we're right underneath the Tukolev 144. There we go. And if that wasn't cool enough, see that? Let's walk to the back a little bit. Here we go. Look at what, what's in the background here. So they both have the Concorde and the Tupolev 144. There. That's awesome, isn't it? Where's Aries? <laughs> yeah, warn him. Warn Aries, man. holding up quite well. Happy with that. Okay. Let's the camera here. Alright. Camera zoom in a little bit. Come on. Focus. Yes. Come on. Doesn't want to focus. Yes, there it is. Need some time. Now that's a view, isn't it? <laughs> that's a unique view right there. There. Concorde. Tukulev. Tukulev, Concord. 
Yeah, Technique Museum Sinsheim. So it's pretty cheap entrance entrance fee. I mean, it's free uh, at this mu particular museum. It's free parking. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, I'm geeking out. So after the stream, I'll, um, I'll be making photos for myself. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, just this is the main thing why I'm here. See these planes, these two planes together is is just so unique. It's like the sim. <laughs> it's like the sim. <laughs> Nobody knows, and some of the people in the club have no re reason to be in it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but as you as you can see, the um, the Tuklev 144 has the canards, and they actually fold in in the fuselage. If, uh, if they're not needed. The reason for it was that the wing was optimized for supersonic flight and the landing speed was pretty high so it needed canards to, to land a little bit slower and get the right angle of attack. It also had a brake parachute and the Concorde had a more optimized wing for both subsonic and supersonic flight and it could land without the canards and without it yeah without it, it had a little canard 